Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my channel, stand-up comedian, pop culture vulture, and Bravo Television super fan, Jolene Lenzer, here to talk about Vanderpump Rules, last night's episode, season 11, episode 6, do it for the gram, or something like that. I'm going to call the episode, uh, Isolate, Groom, and Lie. So we are back in Lake Tahoe. And it is the conclusion of the Lake Tahoe trip. Lots to talk about as Vanderpump Rules continues to be the frustration station. Uh, we're going to do what we do over here, you guys. We roast, we recap, we take a comedic look at all things Vanderpump Rules this season and seasons of the past. Now, just a reminder, I am very opinionated, but you're welcome to have your opinion in the chat, even if it's different than mine, and we can all just agree to disagree as we laugh and roast and discuss this crazy show. That's my opinion! That's my opinion. <laughs> okay, and if you want to name names, name them. Name them. That what? Name them. Well, name what you em. did was ridiculous. Name them. Uh, not having name. Uh, well, be quiet. So name let em. me talk, Jesus. Name them. Name them. All right, you guys. So smash that like as you're coming in. Hello, everyone joining me live, and hello, everyone watching on the replay. Please let me know you're here. Um, sound off in the chat and the comment section after it posts. Let me know all your thoughts, hopes, dreams, and opinions regarding this episode and all your feelings on Vanderpump Rules. This is a place we can vent, we can recap, we can laugh, we can tease, we can have a good time. So smash that like, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to support the channel further, then like and subscribe. And you can always send a super chat while we're live. I'll highlight your comment. You can send a super thanks after the video post, or you can hit me up on the Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, Everything is in the description of the video and on the bottom of the screen. I also have a YouTube membership. Shout out to my members and a Patreon. Shout out to my Patreon supporters as well. Okay. Oh, Evelyn, thank you. Thank you. Melissa says, I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting for you. Linda, hello. Um, I have. I think I'm going to start recapping this the next day because I need time to process these episodes now <laughs> that it's such a mess this season. So um, I didn't watch it till today. And I had to take a couple breaks from watching it because it is just so infuriating. But we're going to talk about it. We're going to get down to it. We're going to have some fun. All right. Oh. <laughs> it was, this is crazy. This is crazy. Okay. So uh, let's just start with Katie and Ariana. Katie and Ariana are, uh, they stayed back. You know, we all know they did not go to the Lake Tahoe. They're like, oh, no, thank you. We do not want to hang out with our exes who are man babies, who Lisa Vanderpump is making apology, uh, apologies for. And uh, yeah, we're not really, we're not feeling it. So they stayed back to work on the restaurant, the restaurant that seems like it's never going to open. Unfortunately, <clears throat> the something about her. I don't know if I saw recently that all their signage was taken down. I don't know what's going on with something about her. I am 100% okay if this restaurant never opens, if they decided, nah, not really a good idea. We got too much going on. Cool, cool, cool. But I do wonder what are all these people they were interviewing going to do? <clears throat> because Dill Pickle Guy was there. So they're there with their like business partner lady who is very boss lady. She reminds me of that designer woman who was on the hills who was like, you can't have any feelings. There's no emotions. When Lauren worked at true religion, free religion, free the people, true to the people, whatever the uh, <laughs> clothing place was. So she reminds me of that. <clears throat> Excuse me, you guys. I'm a little, my voice is getting a little bit. Oh. Mm -mm. Okay. So she definitely reminds me of that lady. Okay. Anna. Yeah. Thank you, Anna. Penny uh, was always like this on Food Network, too. She's very boss man, Randy Savage. She's just like, we're going to ask this question. And Ariana's like, um, you would think me and Katie would get to ask a question? And she's like, no. How long have you been doing this? What's your favorite sliced meat? What's your favorite sliced bread? Do you have a favorite spread? If it's mayonnaise, you got to go. What are you doing? And I will say, I did fall in love with the dill pickle guy. OK, either he's the cutest piece of cute that ever cuted and we all have to get to know him and he has to be on the show and he's like that barista guy that was on Friends or he's a serial killer. I haven't decided yet. All right. But I'm willing to risk it. I'm willing to risk the serial killer of it all because this dill guy 
was pretty adorable. With the, <laughs> I love his little, little creepy mustachio. And he was like, cause I'm a big dill. Ha ha ha. And they were like, that's so funny dill guy. And he was like, yes, if you wear a pickle tie to an interview, I'm hiring you. I love pickles. I love it. All right. More energy of this guy, unless he turns out to be a serial killer. Allegedly. Remember everything I say is true, except for the parts that are false. And everything is for entertainment purposes only. He wants to work at a sandwich shop. He's wearing a pickle. Pickles go on the side of sandwiches. It's so deli friendly. I love it. So he was like, hi, guys. How you doing? Oh, I'm a big deal. And they're like, ah, oh, you're so cute. And then Ariana's like, how often do you work? And, you, and then here comes Penny. Penny Lane was just like, what's your favorite sliced meat? Unprocessed, cut through the cutter of the deli. Do you ever go to Ralph's? I was like, oh my God, calm down, Penny Lane. Like Penny was very aggressive. All right. Very, very aggressive. <laughs> yeah. Pickles have negative calories. They're great for keto. They're just a dill is, is heavens, not food, but heavens. You know what I'm talking about? Spice. It's the spice of the life. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously it's going to feel a little fake because they're hiring people for a shop that isn't open and keeps getting hit with, sorry, somebody pooped on your patio. Someone pooped on your patio. We can't open your restaurant, uh, West Hollywood. You can't ask anyone's D to get ahead. Like Ariana said, because they're okay. Um, so there you go. Yeah. Herb. Thank you, Alex. It's the best herb. It's just such a good herb. So I loved this guy. Also loved Penny's questioning, even though it was Trey Aggressov, all right? And that was a cute little moment. Before we get there, we're back at the Tahoe Resorts. Tom Sandoval is like, you guys, uh, I'm going to call my friend. Uh, she does uh, mediation. Uh, okay, uh, I'll put my headband on. Uh. So Tom hires a woman, much like Jax hired a Reiki. And this woman is going to come and teach them to meditate and help him try to gaslight his co-stars, allegedly, okay? So she shows up. I feel bad for her. She's, she's, she looks legit. She's got a yoga mat, you know? She's got toned arms. She's got the yoga pants. And she's like, namaste. And he's like, yeah, uh, well, what happened was I, like, kind of cheated. Uh, and everyone's, like, really mad. Uh, and it's like, I just don't want him to be. Uh, so it's like, ah. Uh, I just want to like, uh, I don't want to have to have consequences from my actions. Uh, can you help? Uh? She was like, sure, sure. So everyone gathers on the deck. All right. And um, is this them on the deck? Oh, here we go. Oh, do I have another picture of them first? So they're all gathered on the deck. And she's like, hello. Welcome to meditation. I know you hate Tom Sandoval and he sucks. Okay. I get it. But um, everyone close your eyes and just feel the water. Try not to pee your pants, Tom Schwartz. I see a little pee coming down your leg. Just like let it go, let it go, but not down your leg. Hold your bladders. Listen to the lake. Replay all the things that have happened in your life. And then we get a great edit of Tom's life. And it's just like, there's Tom. And Tom's like, Ariana, you should do this with your book. Ariana, I'm a worm with a mustache. It was only a seven-month affair. She's my friend. I don't give a F. About F and Raquel, your friendship is bullshit. No, it's not, da. Uh. So Tom's having a really nice moment. And then we get Sheena, and she's like, because we're good as gold. Rob puts up a TV in seven minutes. Brock, Brock. Um, Schwartz, I feel like he should have had one. I don't think he had a little edit where it was just like pouring a drink over my girlfriend, pretending to be the nice guy, passive aggressive. Everyone pick on Katie. Lala would have been like, you know, BJ's for PJ's, you know, I can get my own Gucci slide, Rand, Rand, pickleball, pickleball. No, 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 no. He's bad. Don't talk to him. You can't be my friend if you talk to him. Mom, I'm a mom. And then Brock would be like, I crikey, I like Australian stiff fosters, Australian for be Outback Steakhouse. And then Allie was like, Uranus, Saturn. Aquarius, you know, she just was doing that. And then James was like, unts, 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 unts. one time I spit on Kristen's door. Unts, 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 unts. I'd like to do it some more. Unts, unts, unts. So they're having this moment and they're all in Sandoval, of course, like, I'm going to lay down. Ah. All right. And it looked like he had a rager in the cager because he like 
put his pants, you know, he kind of bundled, bunched his pants in his crotch area. And I'm just like, oh, oh, I swear to Stephen. Yes. Tom paid off this woman. Thank you, Nancy. All right. So then she says, okay, turn to the person next to you. Even if you hate them, even if they've done horrible things to you and lied to you and continue to lie to you, even if they don't wear deodorant, allegedly, even if they're in a karaoke band and think that they can sing and they try to convince everyone that they had to go back to their karaoke band and do a tour because they needed money. They're trying to make us believe that it makes money. Turn to that person. All right. And so Schwartz turns to Lala, which, um, okay. I'm just going to put it out there. Schwartz. We talked about this before. Schwartz has like a hate boner for Lala, but Schwartz and Sandy, Butt sexual tension with Lala. They're very gross. You can just tell the way they like slut shame her, the way they put her down, but they secretly want to be near her. So I didn't like that Schwartz was like, back to back with Lala. I was like, Lala, protect your energy. Cause even back to back, he was pretending it was boob to boob allegedly. So they're just sitting by each other. And then Brock heads over to Allie and James and Sheena's already mad at Brock cause Brock showed up late. She's like, where's Brock? Cause they're fighting. They're just not getting along. Her mom is trying to care for the kids too much. He doesn't like it. They got in a fight at the swimsuit shop last time, even though we did see she bought the green swimsuit. Shout out to Sheena. She's like, where's Brock? And then Brock's like, good eye. Hi, guys. It's me, Brock. Sorry. I had to go to the um, play golf. Yeah. She's like, you were only supposed to do nine holes, Brock. He's like, I did 17 because it was $150 at stake. Brock, you can't spend $150 on golf when your wife or girlfriend at the time or the mother of your soon-to-be child at the time needs to get money from another man to stay afloat. You can't be gambling. You got to be paying Tom Sandy butt back so Sheena doesn't have to feel forever indebted to this man. All right. The fact that he was just, yeah, well, it was for money on money on what's your job, Brock? I, Brock, what are you doing? All right. Sheena's on here crying because another man paid your bills during the pandemic and you're gambling at golf. Oh, no. I was just like, even hype man husband Shell was watching with me and he was like, he can't be gambling. Oh my gosh. His girl's getting money from people. I'm like, I know, I know, I know. And you put a baby in there. Oh my gosh. It was just, I was, mm -mm. I did not like this. Let me know what you think, you guys. Um, quick little commercial break. I have, my allergies are killing me, so I have to blow my nose and I don't want to show you guys me doing that. All right. The rumors and the nastiness. Here's Meredith Marks when I need her. The rumors, the nastiness, the rumors, <laughs> the nastiness. <laughs> you want me to go there with her husband? I can go there. <laughs> you can leave. The rumors, the nastiness, you can leave. Um, well, he needs to just keep investing that money because the fact that they went into the pandemic with all the money Sheena makes and had zero money, we'll get there. We don't want that to happen again. We do not want them to happen that to happen again. All right. Thank you, Layla. Layla says, thank goodness Jolene is breaking this down. This episode was upsetting. I officially canceled my DVR recordings. It's just not enjoyable. It's not. You have to take uh, so many breaks. So many. The burgers, the nastiness. Okay. So then Sheena's like, Brock, come sit by me. I don't want to sit by Sandoval. And I, in this moment, I don't blame Sheena. Who would want to sit by this man? Everyone says he stinks. He's a liar. He wanted you to get arrested and have a, uh, what you call it, RO against you. He, he shit on your friend so badly. Like, he's an asshole. No, he's not taking accountability. Ew. And Brock's like, hey, hey girl, I'm just going to stay with, uh, what's your name? Ali? Yes, and uh, Jamesy. They're my mates. I'm going to stay with my mates. I got my little underwears under here. So I'm ready to jump in the lake after this. Yes. Okay. Just don't worry, Sheena. You got to work it out. And he actually says in his confessional, yeah, I did it. I did it on purpose. I did. I think Sheena needs to work it out with Sandoval. Yeah. They just need to just hash it out. Okay. Same way I hashed out with her mom. I go, leave lady. I didn't want you here. Okay. They got to hash it out. And I'm like, oh, Brock. Your wife is clearly on the verge of a panic attack. Sheena's not ready for this. We all have to remember that when they're filming this, it is literal a month to a few months after Sandoval broke it, after the reunion. 
So they haven't had a ton of time to process. Now, it seems like a long time because we're now in 2024 and we just celebrated the year anniversary, I guess it's an anniversary of Scandaval. But really, emotions are raw. Sheena, I don't think a lot of this actually has to do with Scandaval. I think this is a lot of, in my opinion, Sheena's projection of the problems in her own relationship and the postpartum she's dealing with and the OCD and things. So I think it's easy to just project this out and be like, Ariana's making me choose. What about me? And it's issues she has in her marriage. Issues she has. The guy over there, the Australian man, that man is supposed to be protecting you. Okay. When you're a married unit, you protect each other. You look out for each other. You pick up on signs. You pick up on body language. Sheena looked so uncomfortable. She looked scared. She just, she's not doing okay. This season is, Sheena's not okay. And I don't think it has anything to do with Ariana. And I don't even think it has much to do with Tom. Okay. It has everything to do with Brock, whatever's going on over there with the postpartum, um, her own anxieties, OCD. And I really want her to get help for that. And I want to see him step up and not don't, she doesn't need that, uh, like almost like a father figure thing where it's like, Oh, good. You just gotta put your chin up, put your big girl pants on and deal with it. No, she's struggling. That's your wife. She created life for you in your baby summer. You have to protect her and you're not. He's like, I'm gonna be over here in my shorty shorts. Yes. Got my little underwears under here. Yes, I'm excited. I love it. Drinking. Yes. Ah, Tom, Sheena, you got to be. It's almost like this is this is a stretch. But it's like you're pimping her out because Sandoval paid your bills. Don't put her in this position. Don't do it. Don't do it. Please, dear Lord, don't put her in this position. She looks super uncomfortable. Go get your wife. Help her out. Are you okay, baby? What can you do? I'll be with you. If this man touched me, I would go, oh, I would just be. No, she's not okay. So Sheena's over there like crying. And this meditation lady, I thought you're supposed to be comfortable. Also, Sheena, you can say no. Any At any time you can say no. If you're in any kind of class or yoga class or doing anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, you can say, I don't want to do that. I, want, I don't want to partner up. I don't want to hold hands. I don't want to, no. Mm -mm. You don't have to do this. So the fact that she felt like she had to do it. Ugh. So so she's like back to back, feel each other breathing. Lady, stop it. Everyone knows about Scandival, all right? You're of the age to know about Scandival. You should know no one wants to be by this man, all right? And he should have to sit by himself and answer for his crimes, okay? He should have to Damien Rice it in the corner. Nine crimes, okay? It's the wrong time. Somebody knew it's a small crime. You know, and Sandoval, you know, he's like, Sheena, uh, is it... Uh, God, it us. Do you like... Am I okay? Am I am I doing anything wrong? And she's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. Then she's crying. They have to be back to back. Oh. And then the lady's like, okay, now turn to the person who hurt you, Tom Sandy Butt, who's in a karaoke band. Look him in the eye and just breathe with each other. Ew. 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 Space. Time. Contrition. Humility. Truly an apologetic heart. That's what we need to bring to the table. Not touching backs, breathing together. Get your nasty ass karaoke breath all over town on every lady who will give you a little attention ass out of my face. And there he's like, and then she's like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't. And I'm just like, she didn't get up. She didn't get up. She didn't get up. And he's using her weakness. And then he goes, it's okay. Oh my God. Shut up. Shut up, sir. <laughs> It's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. In that moment, you could have been like, I'm going to give her her space. She clearly is uncomfortable. I'm really sorry, Sheena. I'm so sorry. This must be so hard for you. Step outside. I know that is impossible for Tom Sandy, but, but step outside of yourself and your own victimhood. Hey, guys. Oh, it's not fair us. Guys, me, Tom Sandy, but it's just, uh, Sheena, come on, be my friends. She is like, I can't do this. I can't do this. What was that supposed to accomplish? Breathing on each other. And then ugh, Schwartz and Lala are going to do it. I don't want them to. I don't make the rules, but they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. I don't want it to happen. I'm like seeing the future. I have my Buffy the Vampire Slayer tarot cards. Show it to Michelle. And I feel like I saw this in the cards that there's going to, something's going to happen. Because now Lala's going to fall out with Katie. It's just too much. And he's like, Oh, let's breathe together. And these women are like, 
showing signs of vulnerability and they're like, I just I want to be softer. I don't want to hate you. I just I don't want to hate anymore. Girl, you can't hate for a couple months. I mean, I could hate for a little bit. These ladies are not Aquarius, not a Scorpio. I don't know what sign. I think Sheena's a Cancer, which would explain that. Uh, Lala, I don't know what she is, but it's only been a couple. You all just were on the reunion. Like, fuck that dude. And now you're like, I just want to hate you. I don't want to be so hard. You can be, you don't have to be so hard. And no one asked you to hate them, but you can still like put up your boundaries like Ariana's doing. But this is exactly what Tom wants. He wants to be able to manipulate these people in these vulnerable situations. They're crying. And here's some of the things I think they're struggling with. <laughs> now this is yeah, definitely not Scorpio. Uh-uh. They're struggling, I think, with, am I going to be seen as like a difficult woman? Am I going to be seen as a bitch? What will people think? Is it time for me? And they're also struggling with their own jealousy of what Ariana has going on. It's a damn mess. Where the Toms, they're not struggling with anything. They're just like, oh, come on, guys. Seriously, I put this meditation together. I wear my joggers. Come on. And Schwartz is like, I saw a bluebird. It was really big. The set. And even the meditation lady was like, okay, cool. I'm 45. I saw a bluebird. It was big. Sinky. Schwartz, I need you to like, just, can you just be who you are? I don't really know if Schwartz even knows who he is because he's so hell bent on creating this image where he's weird and quirky and, you know, he's just like, I don't have feelings about stuff, ah, but I do because it comes out in my passive aggression mo moments and the way I belittle women. Um, <sighs> I feel like he does too. Katie K says, I feel like Schwartz has a bet with himself that he can get into Lala's pantalones. Mm -hmm. He makes me feel slimy. He does. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, uh, well, Brooke says, My daughter's a cancer. She has a pretty good grudge. I think cancers, I think I know cancers can be like good with that. They can be a little petty, which is fun. But um, I feel like they have a lot of empathy almost to a fault. I don't know. Ask an astrology. Ask um, Allie. Ask Allie Bally. But I kind of feel like that. All right. So they're breathing together, Schwartz and Lala. And I'm like, yuck. Um, and there's Brock. Just, ay, this is fun. When do we have Bud Light in tequila? I love it. Okay. Yes. Good eye. Good eye, Sheena. How you doing over there? She's like, not good. And she's like, I don't want to hate you, Tom. And Tom's like, you shouldn't. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm a good guy. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm a nice guy. Uh, God, uh, don't be a bitch. Uh. And then Sheena finally gets up. And the lady's like, thank you for meditating. She's like, I'm leaving. And she goes upstairs. And she immediately texts Ariana. Ariana, I'm still team Ariana. We just did this thing. And it was, it was crazy. We had to sit back to back. It was like a trust exercise. And I'm so sorry. But I still have your back. Uh, okay. And then Lala comes up. She's like, baby, what's going on, baby girl? Oh, my God. What's up? Lala, you want me to Tupac him? So Lauren from Utah comes up. And she's like, I didn't got to do that. And then Brock's like, oh, uh, good eye. I better go follow her. I better go see her. Huh. I'm an Aquarius. Um, I'm not emotional enough to be a Pisces. But I do, I do love a lot of Pisces. All right. Dana says, my son is a cancer and he is empathetic almost too much. It makes life hard when you take. Yes, I see that with my little niece, Lucy. She's a cancer, too. And she she can be petty and she'll be like, oh, you pissed me off. Well, I'm going to put a gift back that you gave me. But she uh, is so empathetic and her heart is like so big. And I'm like, I want to protect her from that. Because, yeah, just like you said about your son, Dana Maria, you don't want to take on other people's emotions. OK, Um. so. Lala's up there checking on her. Then Brock's like, what's going on? What's going on? You know, and they're just not doing well. Whatever's happening in their marriage, it's not going well. Sheena, you guys got to work on that. It's a mess. Um, not good. So then we have um, what happens. Then? Okay, so Sheena does. Oh, no, she calls them later. Yeah, she calls, she calls them later. So then they're like, guys, let's go on the boat. Wait, no, first I think they go to the uh whatever it's called the ski lift <laughs> the gondola <laughs> up in the sky all right and they get into it all right brock um is in there with the two toms and even tom schwartz is like oh god here we go because tom 
Sandoval was like, listen, uh, you guys, uh, it's, uh, what happened is, uh, you guys aren't listening to me. Me and Raquel, I mean, Rachel, we just like, uh, yeah, do we have an affair? Yeah. But it wasn't, he's pulling that thing again where he's like, it wasn't malicious. It, there, his intention wasn't to hurt anyone. Tom, you fucked another lady she was friends with in her house when her ma or her grandma and her dog died. And you fucked her in your house for months and months and lied to her. What is the intention of that? If not mean, hurtful, malicious to hurt. You told us after the fact that the reason you didn't break up with her is because you was like, it's going to be too hard for her. It's going to hurt her. You didn't know how to do it. She was going to hurt herself if you left. So then you realized that this affair would hurt her. So now you're telling us your intentions would be then to hurt her because you continued the affair knowing that. Oh my God. I just, I can't with this guy. He's so toxic. Toxic people are trying to get things. They're not being toxic for no reason. They're gaining something out of how they operate. That's why they operate like that, because they get something. As soon as you find that out, you'll be able to cut off what they're getting, and they will leave. Yeah. If you cut Tom out, and none of you film with him, and none of you want nothing to do with him, he'll leave. Or he'll be forced to change. But catering to him the way they're doing this season, this isn't going to work. This guy is going to continue to be a problem. So as he's going on in the gondola saying, oh, what, but what you guys did was so malicious. Your intentions oh, were bad. Oh, you did all these podcasts. You made all this money. And Brock's like, bro, your girl put a restraining order on my wife because your wife here. Oh, okay. Oh, we were just two people in love. Oh, we didn't do anything wrong. Oh, Oh my God. <laughs> just like, no, no, no. Yes, Jolie Lunzer's number one fan. Like, 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 if you haven't already. <sighs> so Brock is actually making some sense. He's like, listen, Sandoval is 90% a victim and has like maybe negative 10% accountability. The guy just wants everyone to apologize to him. The man who caused all this, who should be looking for redemption. He should be looking, be very apologetic. He should uh, be learning from this. He should own his shit is the one going, you guys are mean. Uh, after I did the thing that was really bad, uh, where I lied to people uh, and I fucked him over. Uh, but you guys should apologize to me because I don't like, he doesn't like the consequences. He doesn't like the reactions people have to his bad behavior. He wanted no consequences. He wanted it to be like, no, Ariana deserved this. She didn't buy batteries. She didn't buy paper towels. She's a bitch. She was cold. She wouldn't touch my dingling. So I had to. I'm the victim of this. The dude thinks he's the victim. He's walking around with a t-shirt that he selfied himself, okay? Or sharpied himself. <laughs> he's also walking around pretending he journals. Did you guys see when they had the journal? Let's see if I can pull this up here. So here's his journal, right? I took a picture of my own damn TV. And he's writing, and he's like, Dear Diaries, it's Tom Sandy Butts. And he's wearing a shirt that he wrote in Sharpie, I feel fine. He's not fine. Lisa, you need to get him into treatment. Get him off the show. He's clearly mentally ill. He's clearly having a struggle. He has told us he's struggling. Are we supposed to believe him? Because if it's true, then he should be off the show. It's so annoying. But look at this. My husband pointed this out to me. Look at how unfull that journal is. Someone who's working on himself, that dude has one page in the journal. He just started it today when they happened to be filming? Isn't that, oh my gosh, that is such a coincidence that you started journaling the same day of filming. And he's like, Wednesday is uh, July 15th, 2023, 9.55 a.m. Uh, yesterday was one of the craziest filming experiences I've had since being on the show. Uh, I walked into the airport, uh, exclamation point. Why is there an exclamation point there? Sheena called me to where they were sitting uh, like nothing had happened. Uh, probably one of the worst days to have only gotten one hour of sleep. Uh. Well, Tom, why are you only getting one hour of sleep? What are you doing? What are you doing? Put the Adderall down. What's happening? All right? Jesus. Okay, I know you think you're a rock star over there, Mick Jagger, but calm it down. You're singing karaoke. So it's like, uh, probably one of the worst days uh, to have gotten only one hour of sleep. Uh. 
This is like how I wrote in my diary when I was legit 12. Hey diary, what's up? Not much here. This boy's cute. This girl's being annoying. I love this friend so much. It's hot outside. Jane Polly is on the news right now. I love Jane Polly. Okay. Talk to you later. XOXO. This is ridiculous. Okay. Probably one of the worst days. Oh, definitely got one hour sleep. Oh, plus flying oh, for free. <laughs> I was very emotional oh, all day because of the lack of sleep oh, and being overwhelmed. Oh, I feel love uh, from everyone uh, conversation could have gone better uh, with james uh, but was definitely he's even spelled definitely wrong oh my god productive uh, you you think your conversation with james was productive dude wanted to get out of there sir and then they blurred some stuff out it was probably like ariana sucks uh, she's the worst uh, she get all these opportunities uh. they asked her to be on stars on mars uh, and also on the show i was on Gosh, the boot camp one. And then he writes, we have the wellness something today. And I have a really, I have something I'm, what? I have a really good feeling about it. Uh, still really feeling. And then it blocks it out. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. This is a 49 year old man's journal. This is uh, all the red flag you need. Any woman in the future that's going to date this guy, touch his wiener, let them into his world, this is all you need. He put a shitty star in the corner. When's, 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 he wrote. July 15th, uh, 2023, uh, 9.55 a.m. Uh. Today was one of the craziest filming experiences I've ever had since being on the show. Uh. <sighs> I'm actually reading his diary, Amanda. This is These are his actual words. My husband, as I was taking pictures, he's like, oh, you can like improv it, act it out, make stuff up. I go, oh, no, no, no. I won't have to. I legit don't have to. He wrote the joke himself. Give this to Billy Lee and tell her to read this on stage. She'll get the biggest laugh she's ever got in her entire life. And that's no shade to Billy Lee. It's just, it's that ridiculous. If she gets up there and says, I have a 49-year-old friend. Uh, this was his journal. Uh, after he cheated on his uh, significant other of 10 years. Uh, even the bubble, right? Even the way he writes, there has to be some kind of person in the chat or out there. Hit me up who specializes in certain writing. What does this say other than sick? <laughs> I like a sleep. Oh, I like it one hour. Who gets one hour of sleep at 49 years old? You don't have a kid. You don't even take care of your dogs. What are you doing? Stop the partying, Sandy Butt. This is his journal, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally going to find this journal, Evelyn, and that's going to be my stand-up. I'm just going to read it out loud. Tom Sandoval's journal. This is hilarious. This is like a 12-year-old's thoughts and feelings. Probably one of the worst days I've ever had. Probably doesn't help that I got one hour of sleep. Uh, plus flying. Uh. <laughs> you flew to Tahoe. Would it take 10 minutes to get there from LA? Is it a 10-minute flight? Rough rough tom oh my gosh overwhelmed uh, i feel love from everyone conversation could have been better with james but it was definitely productive <sighs> it was not productive you gotta wake up you gotta wake up and smell the coffee and don't smell the adderall anymore sir oh my goodness this guy so then they, they get to the top of the gondola and they're like let's get some beer you know uh, <laughs> <laughs> Freaking Brock is like, good eye. I'm gonna get a Bud Light. I'm gonna start drinking. Yeah. Tom was talk over here. And Schwartz is like, I, I'm not in this. I'm not in this. I'm a nice guy. Ah, allegedly. Okay, I'm now dating a 23 year old. Allegedly. Allegedly. I'm gonna go away. I got Bud Lights. Bye. And Lala said, my favorite thing. Lala said, she goes, I'm gonna be really gross. Order me a Cheeto and a Frappuccino. And me and my husband looked at each other and we were like, that's like normal. <laughs> Why is that gross? But I love that they think, oh, my God, I'm going to be a disgusting pig. I'm going to be so disgusting. Don't look at me. I'm going to have a Frappuccino. <gasps> and I'm going to have some Cheetos. You mean you're going to eat that delicious cheese powder crust? Oh, Who is she? Who is she? Who is she? Where did you find her? Where did you find her? So then Tom's like, I'm leaving. And then Brock's like, okay, good eye, mine. Uh. 
I'm sorry. I'm just, you know, I'm just really in my feelings. I was trying to get my point across about my wife. And, you know, I am sorry. And Tom's like, it's okay. Why are you apologizing to him? Stop. What is wrong with you people? Quit Are you afraid you're going to lose your spot on the show? Quit apologizing to this man. This man needs to be the one doing the apologizing, not writing on his t-shirt in a selfie or in a Sharpie, whatever it's called. All right. He's apologizing. Tom's like, it's okay. The more you apologize and the more you give in to his delusions of grandeur and his just overall deluluness, the bigger you're making the problem. Stop apologizing to him. Hold him accountable. Say, bro, you haven't been sorry. We're at this trip. To fr Here's your intervention. Shape up or ship the fuck out because we don't need you on the show. You're like 50. All right. The kids aren't wondering if you're going to grow up. We now know you're not going to. You're not going to. All right, you can go. Other people have left. Other people have left. <sighs> yes, HC, never bend the knee to Sandoval. So Brock's like, I'm sorry. Eh? And then Sheena's like, oh my God, she's online. So she's just like, she's at this beautiful place like Tahoe. They're on top of the mountains. They're looking out. And I was like, what are you doing? She, she, bing, bing, Tupac. And she was like, nothing. Oh my God. It's all over. I took a picture last night because we went out to dinner, which I wish they would have shown us the actual. Did they show? Oh, they did show us the dinner. Never mind. That's how forgettable it was. Sheena, it was that picture, now infamous picture that popped up where it was a woman's birthday. And she was like, can I get my picture with you guys? And they all posed together. And Sheena was standing next to Tom Sandoval. And I guess everyone online was like, Sheena, you traitor. It, did, it looked sus. Here's the deal. If someone's like, can I get a picture? I will. I, you can move over to the other side and go, sure. Let me just hop over here. It, it just wasn't a good look, you know? And she's like, now everyone's saying I'm a flip-flopper. And I'm just like, oh, and it's, uh, uh. And Lala's like, you shouldn't be looking at that shishi. Don't look at it, shishi. And she's like, how are you seeing this? It's not in my algorithm. <laughs> I'm looking at my mentions. Oh, my God. No, I'm not a flip-flopper. Listen to shenanigans. I'm not. I'm like, Sheena, please stop. Please stop, Sheena. Please stop. Please. Ugh. So then Tom Sandoval gets an apology and he's on cloud nine. Sheena's checking her phone. Brock tells Sheena before this, like, I got into it, you know. Uh, good, I got into it with Sandoval. He said, so then I just said, sorry. You know, and she's like, what? What did he say? Oh, my God. This is so hard for me. I just miss him as a friend because he gave us money during the panic and we didn't have any money. So, uh, so poor Shishi <laughs> is like, Opening up to everybody and saying, it's just really hard for me not to like Tom because during the panic cooking, I, we lost our jobs. You know, everybody was like on a break, on pause and my podcast stopped and I had no money and all this. And I woke up and there was a PayPal in my account from Tom. It was a couple thousand dollars. And it was just like, oh my God. that doesn't absolve him of his behavior. People like him, we know that this is a pattern for Tom. He likes to pay for stuff. He likes to feel good about himself, but really you should be thinking Ariana because it was probably her money because he's so bad with his finances. He can't afford that. On the after show, he's like, I like to do that because I got it. You don't got it like that though, Tom, because you owe your mom $250,000 from her retirement. Mind you, we've got no update if that's been paid back and you took out of the equity of the home for your business. So you don't got it like that. You owe money all around the place, all around the town. You're just writing bad checks all around town. You don't have it like that. You're pretending. And that takes out of Ariana's money. So, of course, Ariana doesn't want to leave the house and get screwed over when she's put so much into the furniture and things she wants it to be settled correctly. Lawyers split. Everyone gets what's owed to them. This man is literally playing with, like, fake money. He's got monopoly money. He's just like, you know, get some and you, you don't have it like that though, Tom, you're bad with your finances. You told us that. It seems like a lot of them are kind of bad with their finances. So him giving this is his way of feeling good. It's his way of control. Be able to say, I'm a good guy. I'm a nice guy. It's very common for people with personalities like his. I'm sure many people in the chat have has experience with people like that. And just because people give you money doesn't make them good people. Most people I know who have a lot of money are assholes. If we think of like the richest people we know, we'll probably be like, well, oh, they're kind of buttholes. And they're not very nice. Not the nicest people. <sighs> so, but she, so now Sheena feels like this guilty, but he didn't have to do it. Well, go thank Ariana. Go thank her because it's probably her money. It really is probably her money. And also talk to Brock. Brock had a baby in that belly and he had to have another man come in 
and take care of the bills. Now, I'm not trying to be 1954 over here, but that's sus, right? I mean, we're you're both capable of making money. Where did it go? What happened? You guys make a lot of money. Well, Sheena does, I'm sure. So maybe it's just a learning lesson. You say thank you, maybe pay Tom back, but you can still, that doesn't absolve him. So basically what you're saying is people can just buy you off and then treat you like shit if they pay for you. No. I don't like that. Mm -mm. Yes, it's like peacocking. Exactly. He is peacocking because this is the real Tom and Tom. I don't want to like kill the vibe, but Raquel has a type. What's the type? So Brock, Tom, be careful tonight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a type for blood? Men that are taken. <laughs> <laughs> and he's banging her at that time. On the DL. How humiliating and degrading. How humiliating and degrading. Okay. So then we have, what do they do next? Do so they go to the boat? I think, okay. So they, yeah, they're on the boat, on a boat, on a boat, on a mother effing boat. So they all get on the boat. And they're like, we're on a boat. We're good. We're great. We're grand. Brock brought his little panties. Panties on. He got his pantalones, little panties. Sheena has the green swimsuit uh, from the store where they got into a fight about her mom taking care of the kid for free, allegedly. All right. And um, <sighs> Sheena's still... She sneaks upstairs like, I need to, I need to just check what people are saying. Oh my God. It's like, Sheena, you're never going to be able to control the narrative about yourself. Um, I, I don't know. I would log off. Don't overly obsess about it. Or it's just going to leave you very upset all the time. Okay. So then she decides, I'm going to call Katie. I'm going to call Katie and no, I'm going to call Ariana. And I'm just going to tell her I'm feeling because I'm just having some mixed emotions because Sheena told Lala, I feel like this is the first time Tom has felt bad. And I, I saw him. What? Because he wore a headband? It was like the first time you could see his full forehead? I didn't see any remorse. I didn't see any love. I didn't see him comforting. I didn't see him acknowledge the pain he's got. I didn't see nothing. So she's like, hi, Ariane. I wish I had my, my bucket hats. I know. I have so many bucket hats. Because like Sheena, I too like a bucket hat. She's like, oh, wait, I think I have glasses. Okay, so we have to do Sheena. And Katie and Ariana are like, what's up? We're just interviewing people for our restaurant that's probably never going to open. What are, you, what are you doing? And Sheena's like, hey, I'm just, I'm really struggling. I'm having a hard time. Let me find the picture of all of them together so we can really get the, the gist of, okay, that's Ariana and Katie. I loved Ariana and Katie's facial expression. Look at Katie watching. Ariana, talk to Sheena on FaceTime. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Sheena's like, hi. So uh, I did have an exercise with Tom. And it was like the first time I felt like he got it. And it's like, I miss my friend. Because I mean, he's done so much for me. And it's like, I miss that friendship. We had to do this exercise where we're like, pretend this is the last time you're going to see that person. And I was like, really sad that this was the last time I was going to see that person. And so it just sucks because I know what he did to you. But I also like, I'm dealing with a lot. Brock's being like a total dick and he's like gambling during golf, but yet Sandoval paid the bills during the pandemic. I'm just like all over the place. And I just feel like I can't hate him for you anymore. And Katie and Ariana are like, I'm sorry, what? I can't hate him for you anymore, Ariana. I just, I miss what we had. What did you have? What did you have? You spent a season or two, definitely a season, trying to get Ariana to see what a butthole he was. And I thought that was you being a very good friend to her. Um, You even reached out to her parents regarding him. And now all of a sudden he gave you some money and he's great. And he included you a couple times in the early seasons when the girls didn't like you, and now he's great. 
And Katie's like, what? And Gina's like, I just, I just want you to know my feelings that I feel some type of way. And I just feel like I can't hate him for you. Oh, yes, you can. You can and you should. You really should. It's it's very basic girl logic. It's like, were these people not raised to be, uh, what happened along the way where you don't put your friends first, your women friends first? What happened? You see how poorly he cheat, he treats women in general, whether it be Ariana, horrible, even Rachel Raquel, use and abuse. He's only with Rachel Raquel because he's going through a midlife crisis. He wants his ding touched. He's selfish. He wants it all or nothing at all. And she reminds him of some girl with braces from space camp. That's it. They're just things. There's objects to him. He doesn't care. He doesn't love. He gaslights. He love bombs. He's an asshole. So you want him to do that to you? Girl. Ariana's your friend. Did Tom Sandoval get you deals? Did Tom Sand like if we're gonna talk money, if they're jealous of Ariana's money, which it clearly seems an opportunity that they are. Um, let's pull up now. People will say Scandival created this, but no, you being friends with Rachel didn't get this deal. Tom didn't get this deal. Ariana got this deal. And you being friends with Ariana got you on the Uber Eats. It got you in a deal. All right. Where did I put that picture? Um, you guys sang a song together and you were all pro Ariana. Oh, Ariana, we love you. You're our best friend. You're so great. We love you so much. Yeah. Because we're good as gold. Uber eats as gold. And you guys were loving it. You cash the check, send it to Daryl, the podcast episodes, just being associated as a friend to Ariana, who everyone was like, oh my gosh, when the world just stopped and felt what a monster this Tom guy is and also very triggering because we have all had somewhat of like a Tom in our life. So when you guys were singing and dancing and people were really supporting you in your music career, that's what that's when they were like, okay, okay. And now they're just like, I can't do this anymore. Lisa Vanderpump says, that Tom's going to hurt himself. Sheena, he's not going to hurt himself. He's not going to hurt himself. He's not going to hurt himself. He's legit not going to hurt himself. The dude was manipulating Lisa Vanderpump in a disgusting way because of the tragic loss of her brother. All of these things are feelings that you would have when you do something bad and you hurt people. There's going to be consequences and you're going to feel bad and you're supposed to feel bad for a little bit. You are. Okay. Because otherwise you're just going to keep repeating the same toxic patterns to hurt people if you don't reevaluate and feel bad. Oh my gosh. So, I mean, Ariana, she handled it. <laughs> best way. I think Ariana is very patient with Sheena and their friendship because I would be like, no, we're not doing this. Here's the deal. This man wanted you to get the restraining order. This man, I didn't ask you to punch Rachel Raquel, but I was there for you when you did and said, yeah, she can't make a fist like this. And now you got... You're going to be going hard for this man who said he wasn't your friend, chose Rachel Raquel over you, over me and you, and was like, yeah, get the restraining order on her. He unfollowed Summer Moon on Instagram, Gina. What's happening? What is going on? Thank you, Jody. I'm so sorry. I'm just seeing this now for the first super sticker of the live. Thank you for the support, Jody. You sweetie. Thank you so much. Sheena, you are spinning yourself in a circle. You just have to calm it down. Give yourself time. Also, this isn't about you. What is about you is the marriage stuff. Focus on that. That's that's your real life stuff and a storyline, allegedly. You're not doing anything for Ariana. You should be setting, everyone should set boundaries with Tom Sandy, but because he seems like he will just run over everybody if you don't. Rachel Raquel had to ghost the damn guy because she knew he wasn't going to let her go and that he would continue to gaslight her and do what Lala said. He does isolate, groom, and lie which was my favorites, my favorites. Um, yeah, we need a good pickle tie to break this ickiness. It just gets so icky. So they're like, okay, bye. And Katie, you can just tell, she's like, oh, this is just such garbage, such garbage. We've got a couple flashbacks I love in this episode of Tom just being a douche and trying to take over Ariana's, um, you know, dr the drink book and all that stuff. And then we do get Ariana doing her single AF cocktails book and all the stuff that everyone is very jealous of. Okay. 
So then we get um, a conversation with Tom and Lala. So Sandy, but Lala are on the boat. Okay. Sheena's up there crying, reading page six and saying, I can't hate him for you. And Lala and Tom are downstairs. Tom is in his self-righteous. I'm so great. I'm still great. Everyone should forgive me. I should have no consequences era. Look at my tight shorts. And Lala's like, I have a question for you. Are you not going to get, you know, are you not, I don't want to have to pop you, but are you not going to get offended? And he's like, ask, ask, ask away. Oh, seriously. And she's like, okay. So when you were in this affair, you were coming at me and saying, oh, Lala's not real. Lala's not showing her real life. You're not showing this. And while you're doing this, yes, Lucy, you are terrified. He is terrifying. Yuck. And you were holding my feet to the fire like the day of or the day before you were talking about how I'm fake and I don't show my real life while you're having a whole full-blown affair with Ariana's super good friend, Rachel Raquel, behind her back at her house when people die and animals die um, all over the place. And you're calling me out. Do you not see the hypocrisy in that? And he was like, oh, Lala, God, oh, God, oh my God, Lala, seriously, here's the deal, Okay, mine was seven months, Lala. All right, yours was like six years. You lie too. You're a liar. Fine, you're a liar. I'm a liar. Let's call it a wash. <laughs> what? What? It's not a wash. This man does not want any consequences. He doesn't want to be held accountable. Just because some people on the internet said some mean stuff about you, that is not a consequence. That is not the only consequences you have. You've hurt people. But you don't give a shit. And Lala's like, oh my God, Tom, I have changed. I quit drinking. I did this. I did that. You keep throwing this in my face. You're never going to let me grow. He's like, well, you're a slut. It's just a slut, dah. You lie, dah. You didn't show anything. You're. Because he always wants to push it on a woman. Show me Tom Sandoval. Show me something he's done. And I will show you five women he's blamed for it. And five women who he says are worse than him. I will unequivocally right here tell you that Lala Kent is not worse than Tom Sandoval. No, Lala Kent has some self-awareness. Okay, there, there's things that she does that make me very upset <laughs> regarding the show. But this man has no self-awareness. He's a forever victim. He's a problem. And she's right about him. And I wish she would stick to her guns with this and really be the girl's girl that she says she is. But she's not doing that. But in this moment, she's getting really upset. Really, really, really upset. And she should. And she's like... And fuck you. And she's like, you know what, Tom? Rachel was right about you. And 100%. When I saw that last part three of the interview, it took all of me not to feel bad for Rachel Raquel. When she was like, and, and if I say something, Tom is good. I'll have no one to talk to. This is what they do. This is what problematic men do. This is what problematic people do. They isolate you from all the ones you love. So you have no other option. So they're your only people. They're your rescue. They're your best friend. They're your lover. They're your family. This is the oldest, sickest trick in the book. And just because you're doing it with a smile and uh, freaking glitter pants doesn't make you any better than like a typical asshole who iso isolates his significant other or people that the woman that he's having sex with um, to get his way. So she's like, you isolate, you groom, you lie, you're terrifying. I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Yes. Thank you, Stephen. Stephen says, request an impression of Tom. And oh my God, I couldn't believe Allie put her lips on the oxygen can. I was like, no, Allie Bally, no. He's like, you guys, it's just oxygen. Can't get it off. <laughs> you scare me for a minute. It's really good. And want to try some it's oxygen? No. And so Allie's like, okay. I was like, ew, Allie, gross. No, we don't know where that mouth has been. We don't know where any of that's been. Oh, my God, yuck. You know these karaoke singers are dirty. They are the biggest slots of them all. I was like, ew, 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 ew. I didn't like it. I did not like that at all. I was like, don't, don't do it. Don't do it, Allie. And Allie was like. I think I'm going to do it. He is a victim blame me 100% of the way. So I don't believe anything that just came out of his mouth. I think he's full of And he can off. He can off. Yeah. When Allie did, thank you, Stephen, the oxygen thing, I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. Don't do it, Allie. 
Allie, you better abreva the shit out of your mouth and all kinds of stuff. Anyone want to hit? It's like, oh my gosh, seriously. That guy is, check the coolers at Tom Tom and Schwartz and Sandy's allegedly. He's got some whippets. Whippets good. All right. Um, yeah, let's hit that like. 237 watching. Hit the like. Thank you. Thank you. Mocha Rain. Thank you. Okay. I don't know what she was thinking. Yeah, it could. Yes, exactly. There could be some kind of date drug thing. Don't do it. So Lala's like, fuck you. And Tom's like, Ugh. so Tom got to do what he loves to do, which is yell at women, which is so fun for him. I was so excited for him. And then Lala's like, am I crazy? Am I crazy? Here comes James. Like, I did hear you say that, Tom. I did. You know, James is kind of trying to help out a little bit. And then Brock and his uh, teeny weeny uh, banana boat bikini uh, was like, good eye, mate. Okay. We're not. People have their feelings about you, mate. Mate, you got to take it. You got to take it on the chin. You got to just, okay? You got to own it, okay? And then here comes Sheena. He's just, Sandoval, thank you for the money. But seriously, while I was just saying, just apologize and see the hypocrisy in what you said. You were judging her for not being real all the while you're carrying on like this fake life, like you're great and your relationship's great and you're having sex with Richard McCall behind everyone's back. Come on, I just told Ariana I want to try with my friendship with you. And Tom's like, oh. God, oh, I never thought of it that way. Oh, never in my life. Oh. Like, that's exactly what Lala, you did see it that way. You just don't respect Lala. You want Lala to continue to be the villain because you don't want to be the villain. Sir, it's your villain era. You have to accept it. You have to either lean into the villainness, but you can't be a villain and a, and a victim at the same time. You got to lean into the villainness or you have to truly be on a redemption tour where you allow people the time to process their feelings about you and you accept the consequences for your bad behavior. I mean, it's just like, oh my God, it's kindergarten math. Kindergartners have more empathy and understanding and self-awareness than this man. So I was like, you isolate, you groom, you lie. You look people in their face, bro. Don't make me pop you. All eyes on me. And she just, you know. So then she was like, come back, come back. Lala. And I was like, what? And Tom's like, I guess I didn't understand uh, what you were saying. Ah. Uh. So I'm sorry, ah, uh, let's hug ah. Uh. And I was like, don't, oh God. And Lala's like, no, he probably didn't. And then Lala goes and makes excuses for him. He probably did it because my, my delivery is very hard. It wasn't even a bad delivery. You were literally asking him to see the hypocrisy in his behavior and to recognize any fault in his stars. That's all you were asking. That's all. And you took more blame. Lala then took more blame in that moment than he did. She's like, no, it's probably my delivery. No, it's not your delivery, Lala. It was fine. He's a 63-year-old man. He should be able to handle this. This is ridiculous. Holy unwatchable. Evelyn, thank you so much for the super chat. I don't see how the show is going to continue. It's not going to. If it stays on this path, Evelyn says, too much delusion. Tom and Sheena need a break. They need a break. They need to be put on pause. Okay? We need to get... We got, we got to get Tom... He can't come back until he realizes like he needs to be put on pause. All right. Jax was put on pause for behavior like this and other things. A lot of people have been put on pause. You're on pause. I'm okay if I never see you again. I'm so over you. All right. But do some work on yourself. You, he's like, Brock, I know it looks like uh, I was just out there uh, just partying, living a rock star lifestyle. Yeah, that's exactly what it looked like because that's what you were doing. He's like, but I had to pay the bills. Uh. Listen, you don't have any kids. You don't even take care of your animals. Your girlfriend's the one that's out there taking care of them, being there when they're sick, mourning them. You screwy other lady when doggy died. That's what you did. You didn't take care of the dogs. I don't. How do you get a boner when your when your pet, your family member passes away? That's weird. That's weird. That's suspicious. Like Cardi B would say, that's strange. Oh, thank you, artist, for the super chat. You're the best, Jillian. Hit that like, everyone. Thank you, artist. I appreciate you. I appreciate that. So there he is again. We just, we can't let this happen. We really can't let this happen. This man is thinking he can guess. This is not entertaining. You're ruining the show, Tom. You continue to ruin the show. You're being a horrible human being. You're a horrible, you're a horror show, like Bethany Frankel said about Ramona. You're all, you need to go to Ramona land. It's done now, Tom. It's over. Every episode you get worse and worse, worsers and worsers. Uh, he couldn't even own his shit and have consequences for one episode. There was one episode he didn't show up in, which was the best episode of the season, episode one. And then the rest have just been him going, no, everyone else needs to apologize to me. Uh, yeah. 
I would love to see a Katie and Ariana spinoff show at this time. And then if you want to throw Sheena and Lala in the Valley, go ahead. But the Toms, I'm over it. I'm bored. It's just, it's not progressing. How can, how can they be almost 70 and not progressing as humans? Don't we want them to progress a little bit? This is just stunted. It's lame. It's, we're just getting gaslit. All the, everyone's, everyone's just gas. Everyone. They're like, hello, there's a fire. No, no, there's not a, I'm on fire. No, you're not. No, you're not. Okay. I'm on fire. You're like, but you're not. It's so crazy. <laughs> So crazy. Worsers and worsers. Yes, Avaria. These people are, are in their 40s and I cannot watch uh actual grown folks do it. No. No. Yeah, 80 years old, James. 80. <sighs> Mocha says, we don't need Tom on TV and we don't need Jax uh, back either. <sighs> I second that, miss. Um, either. Both are incapable of growing up and owning mistakes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thank you, Seagal. Thank you so much. Massive love from Copenhagen. I appreciate that. Yeah, some women empowerment would actually probably help this network, given how it's just like crashing and burning lately. So then they're all like, let's swim, let's jump. And Tom's like, see, everyone's sorry to me. Ah. Everyone's mean to me. Ah. Lala. Uh, God. Okay, so then we go back to the Tahoe cabin house i barely watched the end because i was like are these ladies serious she she see she she's in bed i think this is earlier in the day so this is the ending okay she she's in bed lala's like hey girl she's just like nothing i mean good i mean i've just been looking at oh, page six all day shout out to evan real i love evan real he's so cute anyways um i just it's like Ariana has all this stuff. Okay, we got to find a clip of this. I got to play the audio because I actually forgot what these bitches said because I was like, these bitches can't be serious. Ariana, you need to take a pause on some of these friends. Unless you guys have some understanding that you're doing this for the gram or doing this for the show, you probably have to hit the pause on this because this is, these bitches aren't your friends right now. They are not your friends. This is not good. Okay. Let's see. Such a long way from being... My backup dancer. Oh, we'll play that one. We'll play that one. But what does she say in the actual? All right. So they're laying there. And she's like, nothing ever gets to be about me. I'm sorry, what? Yes, your friend getting cheated on does not get to be about you. And why do you hate Rachel more than you hate Sandoval? He was just as, why do you want to be Sandoval's friend, but you don't want to be Rachel's friend? Is it only because of the restraining order? Because he lied and cheated just as much, or as she did. And probably banged on the kitchen counter where you feed your daughter and your bed where you sleep with your daughter, like you said. Sheena, it just doesn't make sense. Okay. Well, are you searching for it? Okay, so she's talking about the photo. Oh. That's not I don't agree with them at all. Literally everywhere. Well, are you searching for it? No, it's just every single person that tweeted me. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that means you're searching for it. Don't get no, I'm not. I'm just literally in my mentions. That's searching for it. Who goes in their mentions? Who does go in their mentions? I mean, I see if people like mention me, but I mean, I don't really get a lot of mentions, but um, okay. So she's talking about this picture and oh, I can't do anything right. And I just took this picture. It's not that big of a deal. Um, oh my God. Is this where they talk about her being all the opportunities she has? Okay. She needs to come back to reality. And oh, my God. This is when Lala, Lala, you can go to hell for this one. You got to get up, girl. You got to wake up. Ariana, get her head out of her ass. I'm sorry, what? Did the pickleball wife just tell us to get a head out of her ass? The lady that told everyone they couldn't be friends with Randall because he's an awful human, much like Tom Sandoval. The one who said Tom Sandoval is Randall. But somehow Ariana has her head up her ass because she got opportunity, because she made the most of a bad situation, because she's showing she has talent. I'm sorry, what? This is ridiculous. This is, I couldn't believe this. Let's listen. We got to listen again. To pull her head from out of her own ass. She needs to come back to reality and remember who her friends are and what they've done for her. Sheena has been ride or die since day one for Ariana. And now it's time for Ariana to return the favor. Why can I never have one moment 
or it can be about me. He didn't cheat on you. <laughs> I'm hurt. I lost a very, very dear friend here. I am struggling with that, but I'm not allowed to feel anything because it's only about Ariana and I'm tired. It's time for Ariana to pull her head from out of her own ass. She needs to come back to reality and remember who her friends are and what they've done for her. Sheena has been ride or die since day one for Ariana. And now it's time for Ariana to return the favor. Why can I never have one moment where it can be about me? He didn't cheat on you. I'm hurt. I lost a very, very dear friend here. I am struggling with that, but I'm not allowed to feel anything because it's only about Ariana and I'm tired. It's time for Ariana to pull her head. I just, I just, ugh. I'm gonna need therapy myself. This is, ugh. it's not about you. It's not. I'm sorry, honey. I know you want it to be. You've gotten cheated on enough or cheated or whatever. You can go mourn your exes, but it's not about you. Your relationship with Tom Sandoval, it's what Ariana said about Rachel Raquel's relationship. It's bullshit. Was he there for you at the hardest time with your RO? No. No. And then pull her head out of her ass. I'm sorry, Lala. Are you just jumping in trying to like just fully take everything from Ariana? Because it, it's giving that vibe. It's giving that vibe. If you would have got the same opportunity. You, and if someone was saying this about you, Lala, you would call them a hater. The one thing Ariana never did to Lala, uh, Lala was she never hated on her. The only time Ariana ever called Lala into question is when she felt like Lala was um, lashing out at people after her father's death. And she went to her on a friend, um, you know, friend to friend saying, hey, I also lost my dad while filming the show. And I think the way you're lashing out, you want to be careful and tried to help her with that. I've never seen Ariana not be there for Lala in some capacity. And Lala paid her back with a, you know, going downtown Julie Brown on her. <sighs> it's just when I heard, I'm like, Lala, you're so jealous. And if you would have got this kind of attention, you're mad that no one gave a shit about the Randall breakup. We're so happy you're away from Randall. We think he's a monster and he's gross. But we saw that coming a mile away. With the Tom Sandoval thing, uh, we didn't necessarily see that coming a mile away. Uh, maybe some people started to pick up clues and signs through the years, obviously. But really, you told us from day one, it was all about the BJs for PJs. And it was just a transactional relationship. And then we had to believe the new reality was you loved him and he's a great guy and he's a great father and there was no cheating. Okay. And then we were like, okay, fine, whatever. And now he's a monster again, which I agree with. He is a monster. But you asked everybody to not associate with him. And now all of a sudden, what did our, I just don't understand what Ariana did because she's not letting Sheena make her breakup about Sheena. <laughs> yes. Who the hell needs to get over it in July when this happened? If it's two years from now and they all can't film together, let's say you could probably be like, Hey, we got to film with this asshole. Whether you like it or not, we got to play the game. We're all trying to get a paycheck. It's literal months. They set the precedent so badly in this cast that they feel as though they have to accept Tom Sandoval or A, he'll just hurt himself or B, you know, the show can't go on and they might not be on the show because they've definitely, at least a Vanderpump production, whatever, they prioritize Sandoval over the rest of the cast and him feeling comfy instead of feeling accountable. <laughs> Stop, Lala and Sheena, I, I, I want to support you. I want to like you. I want to I want to be like, yes, get it, girls. I thought it was so great the way you guys were all rallying together with um, Ariana. But now I'm seeing maybe that was just a cash grab. Maybe it wasn't really the support. And I'm going to show you another disgusting thing. Okay. It's the Dancing with the Stars conversation. It's about Tom. It's about Tom. Okay. It's not about Tom. Is it about Tom? It's about Tom. All right. This is from the after show. Are you guys ready for this? If you haven't seen it yet, I'm going to do more videos about these what's coming out in the after show it's or not the this isn't i don't think the after show maybe it is i don't know or maybe it's previews for next episode either way we find out that sheena wanted to be on dancing with the stars and so this is such veiled poorly veiled jealousy they, they don't care about tom sandoval either 
they're just jealous and they want them opportunities and they want to take Ariana down because they don't want one person to be the queen of an ensemble show. We grabbed lunch and he was like, oh, the announcement on Wednesday, Ariana had to stay in town. So I flew in because she can't come to New York. And I go, what announcement? And he goes, Dancing with the Stars. And I was like, oh. Oh my God. When I did Dancing with the Stars, you said to me, that's what I want more than anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This year I started taking dance class. I was preparing in case, you know, I did get it. I am so happy for her, but it's like I can be happy for her and sad for me at the same time. It was kind of a punch to the gut, for sure. And like, good for her. I mean, she has come such a long way from being my backup dancer. If your friendship with Ariana is as great as you tell me, then you should be able to tell her how you feel. I it's try, not one Lisa. thing. It's I try. not one thing. She is shuts it? me down. So you want a relationship where you're just supporting somebody and you're devastated? Honestly, and I don't care whether you say you're disappointed. That is the story of my life. <laughs> I don't remember this in the episode, but I found this clip on Bravo TV, YouTube. Okay. So Sheena wanted Dancing with the Stars. That's great. I want a lot of things too. One thing you should never do is when your friend gets a great opportunity is you should go, but I wanted that. When Lisa Vanderpump goes, tell her that. No, don't. Don't take away from your friend. She got a great opportunity. Be happy for her. And then you put out those good vibes and those good jujus into the universe and you're happy for her and that'll come back to you. And also, what you know what you do in those situations? You'd be happy for your friend because fuck, it's your best friend, you say. And then show up to all the tapings of Dancing with the Stars, get to know the people, schmooze a little bit. I'm sure Ariana, if she's your friend, she probably knows you want Dancing with the Stars. She'll introduce you to people and then get your agent and your manager to work towards you getting Dancing with the Stars. But again, this kind of entitlement, like it was supposed to be mine. Who says? Who says? And also the little dig, like my backup dancer, girl, we let you do karaoke like Tom. We did. All right. And you got a little more talent than Tom. I'll give you that. But let's not, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. Cause we, what we learned is Ariana can actually sing and she can actually dance. Sheena, stop. This is, if I have a friend like this, tell me, I, I get rid of people like this. I lived in LA long enough to see friends like this. And when you get opportunities, watch your friends, watch your friends. And you go, even if you're at the office, you get a promotion, watch, watch people who are supposed to be your friends. Are they cheering for you? Do they look pissed off? If they look pissed off and they're not happy for you, those are not your friends. There's this quote that keeps showing up on Instagram. Every time I log in, I feel like it's like directed towards me. And it says, um, you know, you uh, look for the type of friends that are cheering for you, rooting for you when you're not in the room. You know what I mean? That's the kind of friendship you want. I mean, Sheena, you could have, yes, Valerie says Sheena will always be be um, second fiddle, unfortunately. Sheena, you can have you can have a really nice life. You've been on this show a very long time. You've got a podcast. you got a family. It seems like you make good money. You can keep getting opportunities. But the problem is you want more, more, more. You and Lala want to be the stars, but you're just not the star right now. You are on an ensemble cast. Scandal broke out. People realized, you know, um, how much they wanted to support Ariana, and they realized how talented she was. She killed it on Dancing with the Stars. She's killing it on Bravo. Broadway, uh, Broadway. Um, she killed in her commercial. She takes comedy very seriously. Remember she trained for this <laughs> and I, I mean, you're not always going to be the star, but you could have a really comfy, nice life, getting opportunities, working together. You know, you got a lot of opportunities off Scandival. You made a lot of money. I assume off Scandival, like Tom Sandy, but is saying, and I think you all should make money off it. Why not? Who cares? It's part of the show. You're all a part of it, but this is getting yucky and dirty when you're, essentially saying, oh, I mean, as my backup dancer, you guys don't have that kind of friendship to take digs like this at each other. I didn't think you guys ever had this kind of friendship. Now, if I saw this on a different franchise of like housewives who take digs at each other, but are still friends, you know, you'd be like, oh, that makes sense. But this doesn't make sense. This just comes off as very petty, very jealous. Lala the same way. I've never seen someone get cheated on, become a queen or whatever she said. It's like, ladies, stop. Stop. And I wonder, you know, we know that, you know, reality TV, some things, you know, obviously played up production, all this stuff. But if these are her friends, real feelings, which it kind of seems like it is. Um, how is Ariana even friends with them anymore? 
Yeah, she wants people to do well, but not better than her. And you should want the best for your friends because you bring each other up. That's how I always look at it. People would ask me and my husband, are you guys in competition? We'd go to auditions and, and things uh, when we lived in LA and for comedy opportunities. I was like, no, when my husband wins, I win because we're a team. And that's how I think of my friends too. Like my close friends who do the same thing I do when they win, I win because who are they going to think of, you know, when you're in a room and they're looking for a writer or they're looking for another performer, or they're looking for this, they're going to suggest their friends, the people that stood by them, the same way I would suggest them the same way I would want to work with the people I trust and love and know are talented. Oh God. It's just like, it's all, it's got, it's gotta be the marriage. I mean, I know Sheena has in the past done shit like this where she's been more apologetic for the men and kind of, you know, um, a man apologist, if you will, to the problematic men and kind of been an outsider to the ladies in a lot of ways. But this has got to be her projecting her unhappiness. I honestly think, you know, she, Tom Sandoval had to bail them out in the pandemic, like she said, when she had a full grown man living with her name, Brock, who couldn't pay the bills. And I think she's mad about that. I think there's got to be some resentment that's built up. And now he's just out there golfing and betting and not really, he doesn't, he doesn't seem to be like validating any of her feelings or her mental health crisis she's dealing with, um, with OCD and postpartum. And so it's a lot of projection. That's what it looks like. Because well, otherwise, why would you do this to your friend Ariana? Why would you and Lala sit in the bed hating on her like this? When it's always kind of been... Sheena and Ariana versus the rest. I mean, Sheena's worked her way into the popular group a few times. Ariana's always been on the peripheral. Um, I just, I don't understand. <sighs> yes, Katie did say it. Katie said she's a male sympathizer. She really is. Katie, if anything, Katie Maloney would never do this. She would never do that not to her good girlfriends. Katie was almost loyal at times, even to Stassi, even though they had a small breakup, but to a fault. But this is like, ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Jimmy says, I was shocked by Sheena, not Lala. Thought Sheena and Ariana were real friends. This is not friend behavior. Yeah, I wasn't as surprised by Lala because I kind of do think Lala wants to put out the vibe that she is a girl's girl, but I just don't see it. I just don't really see it. It's very hard for me to see that Lala is a girl's girl. I think Lala wants the girl's girl and the girl's girl sympathy when she's going through something, but Lala <clears throat> seems like she's kind of put it out there that she'll put men before women, even problematic men she's with. And she's used to like, oh, oh, bitches are jealous. And you're like, are they though? Are they? Are they just recognizing some sort of toxicity? And I do think they're having positive changes for Lala in sobriety. But and now uh, previews for next week, she's going to be fighting with Katie. She's like, bitch, you're always a lot. You know, when you do the gun fingers to make points, you can't tell someone else they're always a lot. When you wear a swimsuit with like a Tupac swimsuit. You can't tell people that they're a lot. When you say you want to pop somebody, <laughs> you can't tell people. <laughs> At least Katie's owning it. Like this is, this is too much. This is too much. <laughs> yeah, I guess Peter's not on the show. I guess they're paying Brock, which good. Get, get your money, Brock. But it just looks like there's a lot going on with Sheena's postpartum, a lot going on with the marriage and like, keep it there. And don't let, I feel like Lala's really stirring the pot. She did this when she was talking to Schwartz. She's like, yeah, right? Ariana is queen being Schwartz and Lala are going to team up to try to take down Ariana because of jealousy. And that's gross because Schwartz has said awful things about you, Lala. I've never heard Ariana say those awful things about you. I've heard Ariana take up for you. <sighs> yeah, exactly, Tammy. Katie's a lot, but Lala is too much. And she's like, when I was watching with my husband, my husband's like, the thing with Lala is she's, she's too flippy floppy. She's too back and forth. It's either stand in it and own it and move forward. But she flippy floppies. You know, she's like, I'm a badass. And then she's crying, which is fine. But then I went too hard. It's like, we'll work on that so that you can find some kind of, you don't have to go a thousand or negative a thousand. There's got to be some healthier middle ground there. <sighs> yeah, she just is, she's pot stirring this. She's pot stirring. Um, Jada says, coming for Katie is my final straw with Lala. Leave both of them alone. They're in their lane, so stay in yours, Lala. And what? And here's that they're all mad because Ariana has boundaries. She's setting boundaries for herself and her life now. Um, 
that I, that's, I just don't see how that's a problem. She's saying, sure, you can go be friends with him, but I'm going to keep my circle smaller after what happened to me. And I'm going to keep myself safe. I have to, because really the only person you can protect is yourself when all is said and done. And so Ariana's doing that and any friend should respect that at this point. And it's so fresh after the reunion and so fresh in the scandal that give her a minute, give her some time. She's setting boundaries. Boundaries are good. Stop trying to push the women on the show out of their boundaries, out of their comfort zone. Stop trying to get them to do things for men without their consent. It's gross. It's very gross. This is getting too gross. Ariana's setting boundaries. She didn't say you had to do it, but just like everything, there will be consequences. There will be things that happen with the decisions you make. All right. Now tell me, Sheena, if someone treated your actual sister like this or your mother, yet you were still friends with the guy, would you still want them? Would you still want them in your life? Would you have the same conversation with your sweet sister or your mama if they treated your mama like that or your sister? Same situation. Let's say Sandoval dated your sister or dated your mom and you were friends with them and he did this stuff. Would you still be like, but I have such a good relationship with them? Would you? Would you want that for Summer Moon? Oh God. It's just like, come on, Sheena. Um, yes, Amanda. Hi, my husband. Chell knows what's up. He knows what's up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A woman with boundaries. <gasps> it's forbidden. Heaven forbid Ariana just basically say, I don't want to fuck with this dude. Not right now. And anyone who fucks with him, I don't feel safe. All right. So you can fuck with them, but then you just, you can't be in this circle right now. That's okay. We don't have to be accommodating to all these men. Tom Sandoval and Tom Schwartz have done nothing to change themselves or to make anybody more comfortable. They've made it all about themselves. Yet we want the women to like bend and we want to go, what a bitch. And she's so difficult because she won't do exactly what Tom wants. Sell the house now and pretend nothing ever happened and forgive him. No, she's got boundaries. I'm proud of her. Ariana, stay with your boundaries. I know you will because you're like a million times smarter than all of these people. No offense, all offense. Um, and Sheena, don't get bullied into this. Don't be a better friend. And Lala, don't be jealous. Jealousy is not a good look. You got all the Amazon lives. You are legit getting paid to buy shit off Amazon and talk about it. You're legit getting paid for being on a podcast with your mom, your brother, your friend, your assistant. You're living a good life. Be very grateful for what you have. A lot of people do not have that. All right. Ariana has a little bit more, but Ariana also has proven that she has the talent to carry those opportunities. They wouldn't keep coming to her if she didn't have the talent to back those opportunities up. And you too can get the opportunities too. I mean, you and James were singers. You did a whole song, do another album. You can do stuff, but you can't do stuff when you're a hater. No one's going to buy Send It to I'm glad I didn't buy Send It to Daryl now because that's some hater money. That money, that bought you a house, you said. That's awesome. Good for you. But not if you're just going to be a hater. Get her head out of her ass. Why is her head in her ass? Your head is in your ass. What are you talking about? I just can't. We have to end this. <laughs> it just, when does it get to be about me? When it's about you, it gets to be about you. Okay. So if Brock cheats on you and, and Ariana has developed a good friendship with Brock, then she's like, but I just miss my friendship with Brock. Oh, and we didn't even get to the fact that Brock basically confirmed that the media outlet said it was someone from Sandoval's camp that put the rumors out there about him and him and Lala, which not surprising. And Tom's like, it wasn't, da. it wasn't me. Yeah. It was to take the heat off of you, bro. We know, we know how this shit works. Ugh. No, nah, I don't want I don't want to, I don't want to give to the hater house. I hate this. I hate, I knew this was going to happen and we were going to have to watch this and watch Lala behave this way and Sheena behave this way. And I hate it. I really thought they could stay solidified as women, as women who have all been scorned. I really thought they could for longer than an episode. Instead of turn on their friend. <sighs> but I wanted to be on dance with, well, you're not, well, you're not. And you know how you're super not going to be by putting this out there. Dance with the Stars is going to be like, fuck this chick. Now, if you showed up every day, which I think she did show up a lot for Ariana, your friends will introduce you to opportunities if you truly support them. That's that's how it goes. It's who you know, networking, all those things. But if you're out there being peanut butter and jelly thinking it was owed to you, she shouldn't get it. No one's going to want to recommend you. No one's going to want you on the show. Oh, I hate this. I hate this, you guys. I hate it so much. Ugh. Oh. I hate it. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for the post-show therapy. That's what this has become. I feel like our little breakdowns, roasts, and recaps really are just therapy because I feel bad for us, most of all, really. 
<laughs> Everyone else make a lot of money, you know, so they can go get therapists. We got to therapize ourselves. And we have to watch this day in, day out and watch the producers, Lisa Vanderpump, the Toms, try to gaslight us and tell us we're wrong. And then, yeah, I saw Steven said, I saw that on Watch What Happens Live. They had their polls. Okay. Okay. Not to be a conspiracy theorist, but Craig tinfoil hat on that was not real. That was not real. Or they just surveyed people in Tom Sandoval's mom's house because there's no way. I know that they're really pushing for that. I know they want the narrative to swing that way, but there's no way that that many people feel like Ariana's head is up her ass. Or what was the exact question? Let me try to find it here. I know I took a screenshot, but I was like, Andy, stop. You know, Andy, you stop that right now. That is not true. Okay. Let me find it here. You guys. Oh, I didn't even watch La La and Watch What Happens Live because after I watched the episode today, I was like, I can't. I need a little La La break. Okay, here we go. Here it is. All right. Do you believe Ariana's head is up her ass? No, that's crazy. That is insane. That is insane. No, look at all these people. I thought, sorry, I thought I was sharing my screen. <laughs> I wasn't. Sorry, you guys. I'm like, yeah, I'm totally showing you guys what I'm talking about. So you mean to tell me, look at all the people that are here. I see the stuff online. Do I see like clearly there is a push possible bots purchased to go on and leave pro Tom comments and all this stuff. But you mean to tell me that the majority of people think Ariana's head is up her ass. Cause how? Cause why? Cause she's got good business opportunities. Cause she's not just going, okay, Tom, you can buy the house with the money you don't have. He doesn't have it. He can't afford the house and everything in it to be able to give her a good enough deal where she would make money. He can't afford it. His mom doesn't have that much in her retirement. If Tom was like a, a big baller, he could just pay for that shit in cash, but he, he didn't do well with his money. He's a bad businessman. He's in a karaoke band trying to make money. Who the fuck makes money for a three to $4 million house in a karaoke band? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This is rigged. Mm -mm. I want to know. Raise your hand if you're sure. Raise your hand if you voted for this. No, it must have stopped. It got two votes. And it was, I want to see how many votes. We can't even tell. Mm -hmm. I want to see. I want to see more of this. I don't know who. Let me know if you seriously, I, I will not roast you for this. But let me know who really heard what Lala said about the head up their ass and was like, you know what? She's right. She's 100 percent right. Besides anyone related to Tom Sandoval or people who hate women. <laughs> Evelyn, thank you for being a member for 33 months. That is so freaking amazing. There's so much misogyny, sadly, in the audience. Yeah, there is. There is a lot of misogyny. I still don't think there's this percentage of people that believe Lala with the head up the ass that Ariana has her head up breast. Uh, Shelly says, someone on Reddit broke down exactly how much money he needs to be able to buy Ariana out. And there's no way in hell he makes that much, especially borrowing against the house. Thank you. Exactly. And thank you to uh, Vanderpump Rules Reddit because they always kill it. There's like two groups. Well, there's the Housewives, Vanderholics, and another Vanderpump one. And it, yeah, take it to Judge Judy. Take it to Judge Judy. I know that you weren't talking about Judge Judy, but I just saw Judy and I was like, take it to Judy. She'll tell you. She'll tell you. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. It's just coming off gross. Mm -hmm. NYC girl. Good girl. Voted no. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Nana would never. That's the boomer except Nana. Of course, Nana would never. No way. Uh-huh. Emily. Okay. So we have one person. Don't come down on Emily. You guys, she's welcome. And you were honest and said, I'm the black sheep. I don't like Ariana. I agree. You agree that her head is up her ass. So we do have one vote. Okay. That still doesn't get us to 66%, but I appreciate you being honest. I really do. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right, you guys. Well, this was fun. This is fun. Kind of not really. We were fun. We were good. We had therapy for ourselves. Um, I have to get going you guys. Uh, but I appreciate you guys. I appreciate all of the comments in the comment section. I appreciate you all sharing your thoughts and opinions as we just roast and make fun of this crazy show. That is very frustrating. Very, very frustrating right now. Um, also, shout out to all of my members, Patreon supporters, and also my super chatters today. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, Steven, Evelyn, Artis, Alex, and Evelyn for being a member for 33 months. That is so cool and amazing, and I appreciate you immensely. Uh, Shelly Marie says, can you bill my insurance for this therapy? Let's try. We can try. 
We can try. <laughs> I think we should. I think we should all listen. Everyone is suing Bravo now. I say we do some kind of class action lawsuit saying that uh, they have hurt our mental health. Screw Leah McSweeney. Our mental health is really at fault. OK, it's triggering me and my disease or disorder of loving reality television. All right, you guys, I will be back. We have oh, we have traders Thursday and um, the reunion's right after the finale. So it's going to be really good. So I'll be here for that Thursday night. And then tomorrow we have another part of Beverly Hills. I guess I'm going to have to talk about Beverly Hills in this reunion because that's crazy as well. Make sure you have, uh, you smash the bell so you get notified when I go live next and when I post um, new content. But like I always say, you guys, uh, take care of yourself. Have a wonderful day and enjoy yourself because it's later than you think. Bye. Bye.